Today's episode looks at one of boxing's contending heavyweights of the late 1800s and early 1900s and the first prominent Mexican-American heavyweight. How good was Mexican Pete Everett? Pete Everett was believed to have been born on January 25, 1875, in Sawatch, Colorado. Everett stood six feet and a half. He had an aggregate weight of around 190 pounds for his career. Everett's career spanned from 1894 to 1914. He had 29 wins, 18 losses, and two draws. 27 of his wins were by knockout. His win percentage was 59, and his knockout percentage was 55. Everett is most associated with the heavyweight division. During his era, Pete Everett was a tough and somewhat sizable matchup who could give many fits. Everett had a good deal of pop, with only two of his wins going the distance. Everett was well-traveled and would face anyone. Everett was willing to use dirty and crafty tactics to get a win by any means. Everett's first real test came two-plus years into his career when he stepped in the ring with underrated heavyweight young Peter Jackson in Colorado on August 4, 1897. Jackson would get the better of Everett, winning a four-round decision. On April 22, 1898, Everett would meet former world heavyweight champion, the Boilermaker, James J. Jeffries. The fight went down in San Francisco, California. Jeffries would be all over Everett from the jump, forcing him back and landing hard shots out of the gate. Jeffries would continue the onslaught in the second, dropping Everett to the canvas, before again catching Everett with a shot that forced him to take a knee. Another blow to the body sent Everett down in the third, forcing the referee to jump in and call the fight in favor of Jeffries via TKO. On Independence Day, 1898, Everett faced former world-colored heavyweight champion, King of the Battle Royal, Bob Armstrong, in Colorado. Everett would knock out the larger Armstrong in the fifth round of their contest. Everett would lose to contender Joe Kennedy via knockout in October of 1898 before losing a 14th round TKO to Bob Armstrong in December to close out the year. On March 24, 1899, Everett was nearly stopped by former colored world heavyweight champion Frank Childs in their six-round matchup. Everett was dropped in the sixth and final round with the bell ringing at the nine count, thus saving Everett. Childs got the decision victory. In his next contest on August 4, 1899, Everett would face one of the great tacticians and boxer punchers of his era, the California terror Joe Koinsky, in Denver. Realizing that he was no match for Koinsky, Everett repeatedly fouled. In the seventh of a scheduled 20 rounds, Everett got a stranglehold on Koinsky and slammed him to the ground. The referee disqualified him on the spot. An angry Everett then struck the referee, nearly causing an all-out melee as police and the fighter's seconds hopped in the ring to break up the fight. After twice losing to heavyweight contender Fred Russell in August and October of 1900, Everett would again face Frank Childs that December, losing a 10-round decision. On May 7, 1901, Everett would meet the tough fighting sailor Tom Sharkey in Colorado. The two traded heavy blows to start the action, and in the second round, Sharkey sent Everett to the canvas with a shot. Sharkey then struck Everett with a blow to the head while he was down. The referee disqualified Sharkey, handing Everett the victory. Everett would step into the ring with another great heavyweight and former world heavyweight champion, Jack Johnson, on August 14, 1901. The two would fight to a 20-round draw in the contest. Formidable heavyweight contender Gus Rulin would knock Everett out cold with a right uppercut in the second round of their March 9, 1903, contest. About the fight coverage, the Butte Intermountain newspaper essentially stated in quote, somebody should take a shotgun to the man or men who matched Mexican Pete Everett with Gus Rulin in Philadelphia. After multiple breaks from the ring, on June 16, 1911, Everett would step in the ring with well-traveled heavyweight contender Gunboat Smith in San Francisco. Continuing a losing skid, Everett was knocked out in two rounds. In his final fight on August 2, 1914, Everett and former World Colored Heavyweight Champion, the Black Panther Harry Wills, would travel to Mexico for a scrap. 
Wills would make quick work of Everett by knocking him out in two rounds, essentially ending Everett's career. Everett finished his career having faced many of the top heavyweights of his era, and despite never winning a title, Everett was a mainstay in the sport, which saw him reach some level of success. Everett faced five Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against Hall of Famer Jim Jeffries Hall of Famer Joe Koinsky Hall of Famer Jack Johnson Hall of Famer Tom Sharkey and Hall of Famer Harry Wills. Mexican Pete Everett died on May 25, 1935, at 62. Everett isn't a huge name as far as the elite of the late 1800s, but he was a fighter frequently matched with many of the best up-and-coming heavyweights of his era, and while he mostly lost these contests, he did fare very well against the rest of the field, 